Need some help with your bow grip? Let's take care of that. Hello and welcome to my violin tutorial channel. Let's go ahead and get started right away with focusing on the bow grip. I'd like to begin by showing you an example of how I hold the bow. And this will be a series of steps that I will be showing you step by step slowly as we progress through the video. So here's the final grip that I will be teaching you. And you can see here, we have three fingers wrapped around the thumb, is bent, touching the side of the hair on the side of the cuticle of our thumb. We have the tip of the thumb placed between the grip and the frog area, touching the wood. And the little finger is the one that's in the exception there where it floats around on top. And you can see that we have nice flat knuckles on the back of the hand here. Let's go ahead and build up a sequence demonstrating how to build this. I'll briefly demonstrate the process of building our bow hold. Middle fingertip to silver, little space, roll the fingers, tip the wrist, little finger on top, bend the finger, place, and there we have it. To help with this lesson, here are the names of the parts of the bow to be familiar with. We have the winding, the grip, the stick, screw, the frog, and the hair. We'll be using this terminology as we describe how to position our hand for the hold. Okay, now let's dig in with the step-by-step -step process for finding your bow hold. Let's begin by holding the bow with your left hand in the center on the stick. Try to refrain from touching the bow hair as it'll just transfer oils and perspiration to the hair. Now let's begin with the right hand, nice and flat. Back of the wrist flat, knuckles flat. Our longest finger is our center finger. So let's go ahead and position our hand on the outside of the frog here with the tip of the middle finger just in making contact with the silver here. So we place that, you can see we have three fingers overlapping the outside of the bow there. Let's go ahead and introduce a gap there with the index finger, middle two fingers together, and little finger won't really be able to interact so much with the, the bow at that point, and that's fine. Now we're gonna roll the bow so the hair is flat to the floor, three fingers are still overlapping on the outside of the bow, and let's go ahead and add the little finger in contact with the stick. Nice and jointed and curved, nothing locked or straight. Next step, we're gonna deal with the wrist position and angling of the hand on the bow. So what we need to do is raise the wrist up a little bit and then treat it as if you had a wristwatch on. What do we normally do to when we check our time that's on our wristwatch? We tip it inwards and kind of look in this manner. So that's what we're going to do here but first raise it up slightly and then go ahead and lean it in as if you're checking the time. And you can see that induces a lean onto the index finger on the inside of it. So I just call that the wrist, wrist watch motion. And now let's go ahead and build uh, the thumb position. Bend it on a 90 degree angle and we're gonna place the very bony point of your thumb there right up in between the the grip and frog portion touching the wood of the stick. And so we really want that on the tip. And then we have the other fingers counteracting them on the outside of the bow. Little finger is the only one on top. 
You can see there my bow thumb, the side of it, the cuticle area is in contact with the bow hair. So use that as a, a, a helpful aid in your positioning of your thumb as well. And here, once again, you can see the thumb in its position there between the grip and the frog. Wrapping these around. And there we go. Once you've completed building your bow grip, now's a good time to do a little quick check and do a little troubleshooting. Let's build the bow grip back. Some common elements here are just checking positions of some fingers that like to misbehave as you practice. Um, one would be your thumb position here. The thumb tends to collapse inwards and sort of locks in position. Even worse, sometimes the thumb will start to slide through the slot there. So let's encourage you to keep a bend in the thumb right on the very point of the thumb and having the sensation there of the side of the cuticle in contact with the hair. Just keep checking on that periodically as you play. And the next element that is very troublesome is the little finger. Now this little finger position can be affected by having too large of a gap between its neighboring finger. If it does, it's easy for the knuckles to start to collapse and go in this manner. We want to try to prevent the locking of the little finger in this style of bow hold. So we're going to go ahead and keep those knuckles with the joints bent and activated. Um, it's also related to the back knuckles here. You can see that if I allow the back knuckles to rise, that will also immediately snap into a locked shape and actually is affecting the neighboring, neighboring finger as well. So if you can think of keeping that hand flattened, that palm pushing forwards with those knuckles, that will aid your little finger's position and functionality quite a bit as well. Check in on the wrapping fingers, the middle finger and the thumb. Those two are the holders. So you don't want that middle finger creeping more and more up towards the bow stick. So eventually you end up holding the bow where you're sort of clamping tightly with the tips of the fingers to hold on to it. But rather, you want to feel like the bow hand is very loose and pliable and is laying in a very flexible manner enveloping the bow. You want to feel like it's just wrapped around and the bow is sitting deeply in the hand. So your middle finger position on the silver is helpful for that. Your checking of the ring finger and your index that they're still doing some form of wrapping is also helpful. And then of course the thumb is the counterbalance there, the counter mechanism to the middle finger. So when you're holding your bow, in reality, it's really down to two fingers. It's just the middle finger and your thumb. So their positioning is very crucial for giving you trust and flexibility and movement. If those two fingers are compromised in their positioning, you're gonna feel like you need to hold on for more safety with other fingers, which their jobs are not meant to be holding the bow. Think of it as the middle finger and thumb as the holders, and your outer fingers are the control fingers. And we'll get more into these kind of specifics um, in some other videos.